Coming up on the Lakeside Loop, Lakeside students participate in jerseys for Jackson. The locker room renovations are finally completed. The boys basketball team has their first home game. The Loop starts now. Welcome back to the Lakeside Loop. I'm Logan Wenzel. And I'm Jonah Osmankowski. After chapel on Friday, Pastor Helwig announced that he is leaving Lakeside after this year. He's pursuing a career change, so he went back to school to study clinical psychology. What other Bible teachings or works of Jesus does Paul connect closely to the importance of the resurrection and the truths of the gospel? Well into my preaching and pastor time, it had been on my thought process to get a degree in clinical psychology, especially a faith-based one. And I was always kind of afraid to do that. I was always afraid of time commitments, money commitments. I, I quite honestly was afraid that I just wouldn't be able to handle a course load. And lots of transitions happened between then and coming to Lakeside, um, including a new program opening up at Bethany College, which is now one of its one of the first of its kind, a, a faith Lutheran faith-based. Uh, clinical psychology program in a master's program degree. Um, I got 15 credits last year through Concordia University and th those credits came relatively quickly. I began studying during COVID so I had more time than I thought and the next thing I know I was in um, a residency program that uh, introduces into its scope doing practicum hours, thousands of practicum hours soon to happen and I realized that I really wanted to, to do this, to, to go into Christian counseling full time. And, and that means now finishing up a semester at Lakeside next year and beginning my practicum next summer. And so where I see this going down the road and what others have told me is that I could be a valuable part of counseling our own called worker base and our, and our ministerium um, and supporting our called workers so that we don't keep having resignations, so that we don't have uh, people um, losing their opportunity to continue serving well. So um, also now teaching at Lakeside has presented this reality that there's just a lot of people who've uh, needed and wanted and identified this need to talk to someone about what's going on in our world and how it affects them personally, privately. And, and seeing that up front and close in a high school ministry has escalated the need for it and the reality for it and it seems as though the Lord has given me the gift and desire to finish this program and do it full time. Good luck PH, we'll miss you. Lakeside has a unique program called SCRIP which helps contribute to paying for things like tuition. In past years Mrs. Berger has been the coordinator but now there's going to be a new face in the SCRIP office. SCRIP cards are basically like any gift card that you would buy. You can get them especially now at the Christmas time you can buy cards and five or ten dollar denominations as gifts for family and loved ones or you can use them for everyday purchases like gas and groceries maybe going to Kohl's whatever your needs are there's over 750 retailers who have script cards available and you can just come to the office here or go on shopwithscript.com to check out to see what cards are available and the script cards have a rebate attached to it. With the script rebate, 50% of it goes towards Lakeside and the other 50% you have your choice. It can either go towards your child's tuition, it can go towards Lakeside itself, it can be rolled over for a future year, or you can receive it back as cash credit. Welcome Mrs. Cooley and thank you to Mrs. Berger for all of her time. Last Wednesday, course selection was opened on PowerSchool. Freshmen, sophomores, and juniors are now able to pick their classes for the 2022-2023 school year. Mr. Rosano has some more information and advice that he would like to share. 
But the actual selection process is it's a real simple process. A, a student or a parent logs into their PowerSchool account and then they select class registration. And then from that screen, they, they already have the, the courses that are, are required courses pre-filled. And then depending on what, what uh, grade level they're in, they have a certain number of elective credits that they can work with as well. But probably the, one of the most important things, and I think one of the biggest mistakes that students make, is they don't spend the time planning. Now, this course description book, which is shared digitally with all of our students, and we always have copies on hand here, this is a really useful tool that includes all kinds of very valuable information. It'll tell you whether courses are college prep courses. It'll give you a description. It'll let you know what the prerequisite coursework is. And so this is an a very, very, I'll, I'll call it an integral tool when it comes to the process. The, the biggest piece of advice I would share is just not to go at it from a year-by-year -year case, but really try to develop a, a four-year plan. If students can kind of start to chart their course for, for all the years that they're here, it then allows them to get a better idea of what might fit the best you know, in a, in a particular school year. Taking into consideration with where your gifts and abilities lie and, and then also what might come after high school. You know, there's very much a different pathway for students that, that want to go and pursue a four-year degree versus those that, that may not. I'm always available to help students. Uh, Mrs. Schrader, our, our, our other school counselor, as well as Mrs. Fenske, our guidance secretary. We're always here, ready and willing to help students. Course selection should be completed by next Wednesday, December 15th. On November 21st, a man drove his vehicle through the Waukesha Christmas Parade, which killed six people and left many injured. One of the people who died was eight-year-old Jackson Sparks. Because of his love for baseball, a movement was started to encourage people to wear baseball jerseys on Friday, December 3rd. The halls of Lakeside were filled with students and faculty in jerseys to honor Jackson. It's amazing how much of an impact this movement has made, and our hearts are with the Sparks family. Jackson's parents said in his obituary, Our sweet little boy is now under the care of Jesus. We're happy to hear that the family is being comforted by God's promises, and they will continue to be in our prayers. The lockers for the East Locker Rooms are finally here. So, the Loop spoke with Mr. Jans to find out how this all started. In Polite, we had about 15 lockers that were lockable in the boys' locker room and, and a lot of bent lockers and all that type of stuff, and just made the decision that we're going to replace lockers. But at that point in time, we also wanted to update and uh, I think correct a problem from back in construction, which when you walk from the hallway, you could look in the locker room and you could see, you know, boys changing. So we, we just had to fix that. So that, that became the motivation for it. And then just through the process of, uh, you know, getting the funding and can we do all this and designs and architects and colors and all that, uh, we, we got lockers ordered about July 1st. Uh, that was the first lot of project. And then the, the project in and of itself started on the 15th. And that was the idea we'd be completed by October 15th. So here we are, uh, December uh, 6th, and they are installing lockers today. So, you know, the supply chain issues uh, have come to legs in terms of lockers. We're not able to be here, but uh, all in all, we're still we're, we're excited to have them in today. Along with new lockers, Lakeside is getting new bleachers to replace the old wooden ones by the football field. The old bleachers were disassembled last weekend and were purchased by the Helenville Volunteer Fire Department. There are plans to landscape the area, so there can be a paved walkway to the new bleachers. Hopefully, they will be more comfortable and welcoming for our future visitors. Many would say that our next story is about the toughest six minutes in sports. That's right, wrestling. Wrestlers hit the mats once again in their first home duel on Friday against Rio. Hunter Summers elaborates. I had my uh, first match on Friday last week. I didn't actually have the match. I had a bye sadly, so didn't get to wrestle anyone, but we uh, did pretty good overall, I think. We didn't end up winning the match in total, but we did good. The match was here at school over in the West Gym. We were against Ryo, which is a co-op with a bunch of teams like Fall River and Cambria, I think. The weight classes are kind of like you can, there's a maximum of, amount of weight you can be. So like my weight classes, I'm in the 120 weight class this year. So I can be anything under 120 pounds and anything above 113 pounds. You only wrestle people your size. So like if you're wrestling someone 40 pounds heavier than you, I mean, I would hope you would lose. It wouldn't be very fair. I like doing wrestling just like, I like the people that do it with me. They make it more fun, something to do but it's a fun sport you can do with the guys. 
Great work, wrestlers. The next home duel is planned for January 4th. Last Thursday was the first home game for boys basketball. It was a great start to the season since Lakeside beat Elkhorn 90-63. Will Miller tells us more. Oh, we scored a lot of points, so that was obviously a good thing. The first half was going fast and it was exciting. Loud cheering and we just executed the ball well. Right now we're we're just we're working on defense and stuff, but we're doing well on offense right now. It was exciting. We had a lot of fans there again, and that was exciting. And we played well. We played good offense, hit our shots, and it was just really good to have the people back in the gym again. enjoy it it's just it's active I like being active and the people there is a big part just playing and people cheering for us is fun and being a part of the team is just it's good to be with the boys and having good times the next two home games will be December 7th against Waterloo and December 17th against Lodi most people know that Lakeside has a basketball team but we also have a bowling team they had their second meet last Sunday and Josh Bidorf has the story this is Lakeside Lutheran High School, but our story does not take place here, but rather... But here at Herring's Fishbowl, Lakeside's newest sports team holds its practices. The Lakeside Bowling Team holds its practices on Wednesdays and Thursdays from 3.45 to 5.15. Now, we're going to have an interview from Christian Collins, who plays on varsity for the bowling team. Um, I think everyone expects it more to be... Um an individual kind of competitive level, um, but it's really team, so everyone matters equally. It's all about fill percentage, so not necessarily how high your scores are, but how many strikes and spares you're getting um, in order to get the state. So um, the easiest way to explain it is if you get a spare, the next ball that you throw, uh, those points get doubled, and if you throw a strike, the next two balls um, ultimately get doubled. Um, but the one exception is with the 10th frame. So if you throw a strike or a spare in the 10th frame, uh, none of the points get doubled in that 10th frame. So the way that the meets work is you get matched up with the team, and then you bowl seven games against the team. No matter how many you win or lose, you still bowl all seven. And then each game, whoever wins that game, uh, gets the point for that and then whoever wins the most games wins the match. Uh, yeah, I would say it's, uh, it's pretty competitive. It's not so much us um, really saying anything to the other teams, but just like within our team, we like to really kind of get each other going, um, help, give each other pointers. Uh, we just really want to do well overall and win our matches. 100% um, I would say uh, you should join. It doesn't matter if you're good or not. Um, the coaches that are there to help you get better, no matter um, your skill level. And practices are fun, meets are fun. Overall, it's just a really good experience. Back to you, Jonah. And now, you're in the loop. I'm Jonah Osmankowski. And I'm Logan Wenzel. Thanks for joining us this week.